Welcome to the third party Transformer News for Retro Robot Radio for the date of June 6th, 2015. I predicted there would be some upgrades for the Combiner Wars Devastator toy, being as horrible as it is, basically. And we have some of the first ones this week. One's coming from Dr. Wu, a set of guns for the Constructicons. These seem to be based on the original G1 guns, just upsized and given 5mm handles. So it's uh, pretty clear he was able to get these done before the uh, toys even hit the, the shelves because you know, there wasn't uh, any need to have the toys with you when you're designing the guns based on the uh, G1 uh, designs. So good on Dr. Wu for trying to fix a turd. DX9 showed off their carry figure in prototype form. This is their masterpiece style Rodimus Prime. Um, according to some information, it actually transforms uh, from robot to full uh, Winnebago with trailer. The uh, trailer is actually uh, based on the, uh, the backpack there. It folds up real well. So I'd like to see how they do that. Uh, yeah. One thing people have been worried about is that possibly the colors of the wings on the back won't be right if they... Uh, are the colors of the trailer, but it's possible that like the uh, wing color is on the inside and then of uh, the trailer, and that ends up being on the outside of the wings. So if that's possible, then this could end up being at least correctly colored when it transforms, which is kind of cool. You can also see how the uh, wheels fold inside the legs there, so they're not showing from the front, which is a good idea. And they're showing off. It does indeed have powerful ankle tilts. Uh, that was one of the problems with the. Hasbro Takara uh, masterpiece is that it broke very easily around the ankles. Here you can see it also will be shipping with a Target Master Companion, although it's quite a big rifle, not the little teeny firebolt gun from uh, from the Target Master line. Maybe he got upgraded with the Matrix 2 into a big rifle. And there he is in his alt mode. So that looks kind of cool. I don't know what they're going to call Carrie's carry on here. Also there was a bit of an implication that uh, this might get a Shattered Glass repaint which would be kind of cool to see Shattered Glass Masterpiece showing up. Uh, we got some art for the upcoming Fans Toys uh, Tesla figure who's going to be coming out pretty soon from what I've heard. That Tesla is their Masterpiece style Perceptor. Fans Toys also showed off the first artwork of their upcoming Grinder figure. Grinder is their fifth of their Iron Diebots based on uh, Masterpiece Grimlock. It's a little bit different in details. It's more going with their style. And it is a bit larger than the official Masterpiece Grimlock figure so that it will stand more in scale with the other Iron Diebots. So for people who just don't want a wimpy little uh, Masterpiece Grimlock, you're going to have a big one now to choose from. Um, the, al the alternative to this is also the uh, knockoff companies have just made a larger version of Masterpiece Grimlock. We've seen prototypes of it, but it hasn't been released yet. I'm not sure if you want to go with just the enlarged version of the uh, Masterpiece figure or this Fans Toys original mold that just is inspired by it. X2 Toys and Shadow Fisher have also teased another upgrade for the uh, abomination we call Combiner Wars Devastator. Uh, this will be replacing the forearms and hands with something a little bit bulkier so they're not so bad. It looks like possibly some fixes for the shoulders allowing it to uh, uh, actually bend at the shoulders out instead of being a complete brick 
of giant size, so that might be a little bit of an improvement. Iron Factory, uh, really exciting announcements. Uh, came out with these War Within and uh, IDW inspired, uh, I guess you wouldn't call them Dinobots, they'd be the Lightning Strike Coalition. Uh, these are basically the Dinobots before they became dinosaurs, and people are like, what? What? They were built as dinosaurs. Nope, that's just in the TV show. Learn to read the comics where the real fiction is. Yeah, the Dinobots were on Cybertron once. And they uh, had these big construction vehicle kind of alt modes. And that's when back when they formed the Lightning Strike Coalition in the War Within comics. And also this is what their form was in the uh, Fall of Cybertron setting. Before they became Dinobots from... Uh, Shockwave's experiments. So these are going to be large legend size figures. If they end up the same size as uh, the Iron Factory Ultra Magnus, they could be almost as big as a deluxe. But uh, they're meant to go with legends, just with, uh, they're just going to be really big characters. So I'm looking forward to seeing alt modes for them. So far we've only seen the prototypes. And they look pretty darn good. Wonder if they could work in uh, some sort of combining feature. And no, I don't mean a giant robot. I mean, why not make a gigantic construction vehicle out of them? You know, something like the Dynamo for the Dinobots. No way, that's silly. Uh, also, Iron Factory showed off uh, prototype images of a Overlord and Prowl-inspired figure. I was checking out the details of this Prowl, and it's definitely inspired by the IDW comics. This is the Cybertronian form he had uh, in Robots in the Skies. At first I thought maybe it was the War Within Prowl, but uh, the War Within Prowl had some different details on it, and the details on this are closer to the IDW version of Prowl. Also the uh, Overlord, uh, definitely the Last Stand of the Wreckers kind of Overlord. It looks like it will transform into both a jet and tank at, that sp separates into them, and then those can combine into a base mode. So here's the base mode, here's the jet. Here's the tank. So it splits apart into Jet and the tank, and they can combine into a robot or a base. Doesn't look like it's going to have power masters. It will have lots of uh, 5mm ports. Keith's Fantasy Club showed off its upcoming Stinger uh, cassette. Stinger is a cassette based on an unused character from the 1986 Transformers movie. In one of the early scripts, one Blaster had a cassette that turned into a scorpion that was later changed. But uh, it looks like it's finally going to be an actual toy that you can buy. And this will be part of their uh, set that comes with the repaint of their Blaster-inspired figure as a Sound Blaster. Here we can see it with a little uh, render with some paint detail. And they're actually calling it Stinger. So that's yeah, not the Age of Extinction uh, red version of Bumblebee. This is from the uh, 86 movie. And here you can see him with Double Deck and Mandy, which will be his uh, partners when they are released. Maki Toys had a really big week. Uh, here's a what appears to be just about final version of their character called Axel, who will be part of their not Defensor combiner. It has a real good uh, vehicle mode. I'm not so sure about the robot mode. But if you like having a gigantic freaking uh, motorcycle as your uh, defense or leg, this is kind of the thing for you. Also, we saw some box images of their upcoming uh, yellow version of the giant box set. Yeah, this is the, the green version of giant, giant type uh, 61, that has been recolored yellow like the G2 uh, Devastator. So it has the mold of the uh, green version with the colors of the yellow version. And if you uh, missed out on the original Giant and would like to get it, this is one possibility. Personally, I was hoping for something different. They could have done the orange just to make it completely different for G2 or Shattered Glass or Diaclone. But uh, at least there's something they're making. Uh, we got some images of the upcoming Utopia, which I guess is just being released about now. Here he is in his vehicle mode. Oh, excuse me, this is Dystopia, the uh, recolor. Also, Maki Toys showed off unpainted test shots 
of their masterpiece chrome dome inspired figure and according to most information i found this guy is going to stand about as tall as mp10 because in the headmaster comics all the headmaster warriors stood as tall as optimus prime so this is going to be a giant freaking car this is basically leader class uh chrome dome and as you can see the ro the vehicle mode is entirely g1 inspired not like the uh, code which took a little liberties so if you want one that's a lot more g1 inspired or just really freaking big chrome dome this might be the figure for you Maki Toys also showed off their uh, upcoming Reflector-inspired figure, which I'm not sure if these are Deluxes or Voyagers, but they are very, very cartoon accurate. I know some people have been saying, you know what, I'd like if one of the uh, many different companies making a Reflector would do something that's a little more toy accurate. I wonder if there'll be a recolor of these in toy colors, at least. That would be uh, interesting. And as you can see here, it actually has the front of the uh, camera modes are end up on the back of the robot mode. That's how the, they're able to have completely different lenses and be animation accurate. So that's kind of neat. Oh yeah, and here's the box for uh, Dystopia. And oh, someone did a comparison of a uh, original... Or it looks like that might be the uh, knockoff of Metro Titan. The uh, release of Dystopia and a custom paint job version on Metroplex made to look like Metro Titan. Mega Steel uh, has been showing off some color images of their upcoming uh, Stormbringer Megatron inspired figure. I think this is called Granville. Uh, I believe this is about a large Voyager, which is kind of neat. Uh, I like it. It's sort of War Within inspired, but uh, this is actually how Megatron appeared in the Stormbringer comic book. The transformation on this is a very similar to the Fallen uh, from the Titanium line. In fact, I think that one of them was inspired by the other, if you actually research it. So that's why they have such a similar transformation. And here he is in his little H-Tank mode. Yeah, okay, little H-Tank. It's big freaking H-Tank mode. So that's cool. Looks like there might be even some 5mm ports on the side, which is nice. Mastermind Creations showed off some of the renders of their upcoming Masterpiece Insecticons figures. Yep, they look pretty darn good. Uh, I guess these are kind of Studio Ox inspired. Honestly though, I'm having trouble seeing the difference between them and all the other Masterpiece Insecticons that are coming out. And I really wish that the companies that uh, are doing this would have a little more communications and just say, okay, you get this guy, I get that guy. I'd be perfectly happy if all three companies that are coming out with the Masterpiece Insecticons just picked one Insecticon each. But uh, I guess everyone has to do their own style. So here's uh, their Not Shrapnel. Planet X was showing off their upcoming release of a uh, Slug-inspired figure. Yes, I said Slug because this is Fall of Cybertron and uh, Hasbro lost its backbone and uh, was afraid it might offend three people in the UK. So, uh, yep, yeah, we got uh, Slug here. And it's a cool looking figure. It definitely looks like the uh, video game model. Play with this too. Uh, showed off a little bit of a teaser image. This character looks to be a silhouette of Boneyard, or one of his recolors, maybe, uh, which was a uh, guy that was inspired by Pretender Grimlock. Uh, he was also one of the main characters in their fiction called uh, Boneyard, and it, that is the axe we saw uh, teased uh, about a week ago. Now he has it. It looks like it's a big dinosaur head or something on the axe. Uh, and we also got some information that the Chosen Prime uh, we'll have some prototypes and renders at BotCon for Play With This 2. Uh, Get Right Robo and Chosen Prime and Play With This 2 all together showing off the uh, figure prototypes and renders. So if you're at BotCon in the coming weeks, you might want to check out what's coming out from them. It looks like they are definitely uh, coming back as they slowly reorganize and uh, come up with a new plan. So I'm very interested to see what they're going to come out with.
Repro Labels had quite a bit of releases this weekend. Uh, they, this was the set of labels for the mach Toys armor for uh, Nemesis Prime. Also, they have a full set of labels for mach Toys Quantron, which look very interesting and detailed if you have that figure. SXS Overclocking has a set of labels that have come out. And the X Transbots Apollyon, uh, which actually has raised chest details now. It's kind of interesting. We got some new images of Spark Toys War Within uh, Optimus Prime inspired figure. This guy looks to be at least ultra class, maybe, uh, maybe bigger. Uh, definitely a bulky figure. I think that's a little bit too big if you ask me, but you know, obviously every Transformers fan has his own opinion. Um, because it's not quite masterpiece, and it's a bit big for uh, anything else. It literally is in a scale all of its own in, the, in that class. But again, there aren't that many War Within figures uh, to begin with. Um, yeah, if it had been more of a Voyager size with a trailer add-on, I think I would have been more interested. But uh, for you War Within fans, hey, you got another choice. Oh, and I wanted to make a little mention of this. Uh, Takara. Uh, is definitely uh, picking an interesting remold to make for their RC figure. Ends up there remolding it into Nightbird. And in case this seems familiar to you, that's because back in 2005, TFCon had a remold of the Impossible Toys version of RC done as Nightbird. Now, admittedly, the Takara version will probably end up being superior because the... Uh, the Impossible Toys mold just wasn't that great. It was very floppy, skinny, didn't have any kind of standard sized holes to it. So the, you know, the one from Takara will be nice, but it's nice to see that uh, they are taking inspiration from some good ideas from the third party. Great work, Takara. Try to catch up. Toy World released box images of their upcoming Grimshell figure. Grimshell is their combiner Grimlock. Uh, I think up till now we've been known him as Corlock. So now he has a new name. And I guess he'll be the third figure coming out in their Toy World Dinobot Combiner line. Alright, here you can see the back of the box too. A little bit of a uh, shout out to Unicron WMD who uh, said that they're going to be releasing this uh, t-shirt. I believe this is going to be at BotCon. Uh, yes, this t-shirt says, when I party, I third party. So that would be kind of interesting. I wouldn't mind getting one of these myself if I could find one of my size. As you can see, it actually has some of the box art of some of the uh, cooler third party figures inside of it. I wouldn't mind seeing some of the older ones. These are all newer ones, but hey, it's good to see a nice t-shirt. Voodoo Robots showed off uh, these renders of the backsides of their Ironhide and Ratchet-inspired figures. Shows you a little bit about how the uh, figures fold up. And you can see that uh, Ratchet has a gun that's based on the original Toys gun that's set on the platform. You also see a little bit about how the uh, wheels fold up into the bodies. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. I noticed that it has a lot, Ratchet has a lot of holes in the back of his shoulders. I wonder if those are going to be covered up or filled in. But, uh, nice little efforts. We got in-box images of the Warbitron version of uh, Nose Cone that's going to be out soon, I believe. And X-Transbots gave us some updates of renders, updated renders of their... Uh, Cyclonus and Nightstick inspired figures. These are going to be masterpiece size and uh, they're looking very very generation 1 animation model accurate. This week's spotlight is on the Eon Quest Kickstarter. Eon Quest is a Kickstarter that's going right now. It's about half funded and has three days left but uh, you know the last couple days are the times when you start getting a surge so maybe they'll get a little something out of this. A, the Aeon Quest is a Kickstarter that's based off a former Kickstarter the same guy put together 
for a set of action figures based on uh, kind of 1980s style space opera action figures uh, that uh, he came up with on his own. And now this Kickstarter is to make a graphic novel, a.k.a. comic book, of the characters and their adventures. He's looking to raise about $4,000. He has about 1800 right now. And uh, you can see that he has the cover art done. He's already released several pages of the artwork for the characters. And I really do like the artwork. I think it's very good. And, uh, yeah, I think about 20 bucks gets you the actual printed copy of the comic book when it comes out. So, and it even has a little bit of the origins of the characters and a little background is going to be in them. So, I think this looks very cool, very inspired by, I would say, Rom the Space Knight sort of things, or uh, uh, Micronauts, as far as the character's design looks. And uh, if you like this sort of thing, too, you might want to check out the uh, Eon Quest graphic novel Kickstarter. I'll put a link in the uh, show notes on the YouTube channel. Since my last episode was posted... I also posted a short video review of an accessory from Play With This 2 called the Saw Slasher Scythe. This is the accessory that was originally intended to go with the Bloodbath and Sir Pythonor figures, and hopefully we'll be seeing it coming out sometime. We had some feedback on the last episode. Uh, Dinobot Maximize says that he is looking forward to the uh, Spark Toys War Within Optimus Prime, and he's been hoping for the toys from that line for some time. Jewish Man comments that he is happy to see my show back, and also mentions that he's been tr collecting the Toy World Not Throttlebots combiner recently. And finally, Leader Ultra Magnus dropped a quick note saying he's glad to have the show back and wants everyone to share it. Thanks. This week's screen capture is of the arcade robot from the 2015 or was it 1985, short film, Kung Fury. This week's news brought to you from the pages of tformers.com and TFW2005, news read by Matthew Ignash, stop by wikialpha.org to read more about third-party Transformers, check out the Facebook page of the third-party TF Crashers, and then come on by the Retro Robot Radio YouTube channel and subscribe.